In this segment, we're going to talk about neural language models. So from the definition we had before, we can define the probability of a sequence of words as uh, the probability of the first word times the probability of the second given the first, et cetera, and so on and so forth. For n-gram language modeling, we made the assumption that only the n minus the kind of previous n minus 1 words matter. We're not going to make that assumption anymore. Instead, what we're going to say is how can we model this distribution, p of wn, given w1 through wn minus 1, in a smarter way. In particular, rather than using these uh, relative frequency counts based on, uh, you know, that we had in the n-gram models, can we use a neural net to predict the next word conditioned on maybe more of the context than we were able to use before? So the reason that, uh, the reason, by the way, that people didn't explore this for a long time in the literature was just because when you have a very large corpus, this kind of training gets very slow. Um, so this idea has been around for a long time, but wasn't necessarily explored because it didn't scale as well as the counting and normalizing scheme and n-gram models. All right, so we'll start with a very basic, uh, neural LM. And this should look familiar. Basically, the probability of a word given a previous word So we are appealing to something that looks like the skipgram model, where we have a vector for the current word wi uh, and a vector for, uh, let's say, a context vector associated with uh, the, the word at position i minus 1. And in the denominator, we uh, have to sum over all the possible words we could be generating at this point. So this kind of gives you an idea of uh, the way we might approach this. So skipgram obviously only uses one word of context. And in, in general, skipgram is about modeling uh, wor you know, words that are possibly larger distances away or both sides. Uh, so this would be a, a specialization of skipgram to this particular setting. So, but this gives you an idea of the kind of way we can approach this. And so more generally, The way we can parameterize this is like p w i given w one through w i minus one might be a soft max of I'm going to write u uh, w i here dotted with some function of w one through w i minus one. So. What this, this function f could be a neural net to embed the context. So there's a couple of choices for ways that we could do this. Uh, so from what we've seen so far, we could have f be something like a deep averaging network. The nice thing about this is deep averaging networks for tasks like sentiment analysis work very well, um, but the problem is that this ignores the order of the words in the context. It's going to treat wi minus 1 and w1 the same because it just sums everything together, and so this is not going to do a good job of capturing the idea that probably the word that's immediately before wi has a kind of highly constraining effect on what wi should be, and the word that's, you know, 15 positions back has a much less strong effect. We could also explore using a feedforward neural network. And so uh, what this looks like is, let's say our context is, I saw the dog. Uh, we have, you know, some sort of uh, neural net here that embeds this 
into a vector. Uh, and then we put through a final matrix multiply in softmax, and that yields the probability of wi given w1 through uh, wi minus 1. All right, and so uh, this has been explored in prior work uh, by Mani and Hinton. And uh, quite a while ago, back in 2003, the problem with this is that it also has the same problem as n-gram language models in that it doesn't necessarily scale to long contexts. Um, so if we, for example, have, uh, if, if we want to include 20 words of context, suddenly we need a very large neural network in order to do that. Um, and the number of parameters sort of grows in the amount of context that we want to use. So these are both viable approaches for, uh, for building neural language models. But where we're going next is to look at how recurrent neural networks can solve this problem. What recurrent neural networks are going to allow us to do is they're going to allow us to break away from this dependence on a number of parameters that like has to scale with the amount of the input that you're looking at or the amount of, let's say, context for the language modeling problem. And so that's going to be very, very useful here because we're going to be able to build models that can just look at arbitrarily long contexts. It may not use all the context, but that's OK. It at least theoretically scales to be able to use it all without running into the computational problems that n-gram LMs and these sorts of feed-forward neural network-based LMs give. That's the end of this segment. <laughs>